Hi, friends of South Aberdeen Baptist Church. This is Pastor Bob Kanegi with another Thursday Bible study, uh, with it being Thursday, May 7th, 2020. It's uh, designated as National Day of Prayer, and so let me lead us in prayer uh, for our leaders in our nation and in our state and our local area. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your goodness and kindness. Thank you for your mercies. I pray for wisdom and protection over those who lead us, that is, that they would seek your will and do what honors you. Your word would be upheld through all of this process and the difficulties our nation and the world faces today with the, with the COVID virus. Lord, thank you that you care, that you are engaged and involved at every level with every person, and you care in such a way as to bring the spiritual and physical remedies that are uh, appropriate for each person in everyone's situation. The elderly person who may be near the end of their life or the young person who's just finding out that life is difficult and uh, we pray for the those who lead us locally nationally and worldwide that your will will be done and ultimately may your kingdom come we look forward to what you have in future for mankind through all of our travails and difficulties the name of the lord will be praised and exalted we thank you for this hope that we have. We look to you in devotion and dedication of ourselves to be all we can be in this present day and crisis. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Well, having completed the teachings uh, of the Gospel of Luke for the last few years, we're now moving into a uh, doctrinal study of uh, significant biblical teachings and topics that um, are made known in Scripture so that we would have God's ideas about mankind and not simply explore the ideas of man about God. We're able to say that and not feel like we're being vain about it because we're uh, understanding that the book called the Bible is actually God's word to man, not man's ideas about God. And so consequently, if that is a uh, humbling or perhaps offensive idea to some, uh, many of us have come to regard it as a significant and wonderful truth that there is a word of truth, there is an absolute reality, and we are bound to find out all we can know within our limited resources and our limited finite intelligence who God is and what is man in the light of who God is. So, as we uh, look into this study, we see on the screen some of the uh, representations of man's ideas about God. And some are based on the scripture and some eventually become less and less tied to divine revelation and more and more tied to the limitations of human reason. So here we see Michelangelo's representation of the creation of man. And uh, there's Adam getting the spark of life from the Heavenly Father. Well, this is a wonderful representation in fresco form on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel in Rome, Italy. And this uh, reminds us of the uh, divine perspective looking down upon man and communicating to him uh, the very fullness of life. Uh, there is also some speculation that Michelangelo may have had in mind the conveyance of intelligence, but intelligence is in fact 
and the conscious of uh, uh, humanity is a attribute that sets us apart from many creatures where we know that we know something and not just know something. Uh, so this was in the 16th century that Michelangelo uh, created this wonderful masterpiece and we move on into the 17th century and John Milton writes his Paradise Lost, a uh, epic poem of the creation and fall of mankind out of the good graces of God, but uh, in a position to receive God's redemption. Now coming to the 18th century, we have Alexander Pope, who wrote an essay called uh, Essay on Man, and it was a philosophic poem in nature who acknowledged God. Um, limitations to his thoughts uh, existed about the nature of God, but nonetheless uh, recognized a responsibility of man toward God above. Now, in the 19th century, a writer, George Eliot, yes, that's George Eliot, that was her pseudonym, uh, pseudonym for Mary Ann Evans, a writer of a agnostic humanism uh, philosophy who uh, had some respect for the traditions of Christianity and integrated those thoughts uh, and moral concerns into her compositions, her poems. Uh, her developed skill was in the editorial work and a uh, prominent uh, liter literary um, writer of the 19th century in Great Britain. Uh, at that same time was a writer in 19th century Germany named Friedrich Nietzsche, who was uh, considered a nihilist, that is, a person who denied the existence of God, but who said that what really matters is simply man's ideas about God, and everyone has the opportunity to shape their own lives around their own ideas about uh, the God that they choose to invent through their reason and thought and contemplation of the world around them. Moving into the 20th century, um, that's way back when uh, I used to live in the 20th century. You know, back around the 1970s, I attended a school in Dallas, Texas, a seminary that uh, uh, featured one of the professors, Dr. Charles Ryrie, who had a way of making some very complex matters a little more practical for people and for uh, students out of a university and college that didn't have a, a Christian orientation per se. Uh, there was a, an opportunity to learn about what the Bible says about God and about man with some very good, uh, at times simple, uh, ways to understand and communicate who God is and who man is in the light of who God is according to God's word, the Bible. Well, so he ended up writing around that time a book called A Survey uh, to Bible Doctrine or A Survey of Bible Doctrine. And in chapter six, he writes the nature, a uh, chapter called The Nature of Man. The question, what is man, is without doubt the most basic of philosophical, theological, and practical questions. Man is only a body, says the materialist. Man's body is nothing but an idea, says the idealist. Actually, says the pragmatist, we know nothing of either material or immaterial entities, only relationships. Bound up with these viewpoints are answers to the all-important questions, where did we come from? Why are we here? Where are we going? Then he goes on to explain how 
uh, philosophy engages in and the effort to figure out uh, what God is, basically a projection of man's ideas about God and that uh, the uh, biblicist uh, attempts to interpret and understand and apply God's message and word to man about who he is and about uh, who God is and about who man is. Uh, that's 20th century. There, late 20th century, there's this TV show called uh, Third uh, Rock F from the Sun. And here we have some aliens coming to Earth, uh, taking on the f form of humanity and going on a discovery mission to understand through relationships with humans what it was that made them a distinctive uh, race of beings. So that featured John Lithgow and uh, the other actors you see portrayed here. And uh, we then come to the 21st century where we have uh, God and man challenged as to their authority, uh, particularly when it comes to the distance between God and man. And so God and man are being cited for uh, violating the protocols of social distancing. I <laughs> love it. Well, Sunday is Mother's Day. Uh, then in another month or so is Father's Day. So I thought my theological journey that I would like us to go through a more interpretive in fashion on Thursdays for the next several weeks. We begin uh, with the doctrine of man or the study of what is man and the scripture poetically addresses this question in Psalm 8, a very wonderful portion of scripture uh, composed by David uh, to the chief musician on the instrument of Gath that was in Philistia along the coastal region of Palestine. And in verse 1, which is echoed again in verse 9, the final verse of this chapter, is this wonderful expression of praise, O Lord, our Lord, Yahweh, our Lord, whom we worship. How excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glories above the heavens. Well, he stakes out uh, his territory and man's territory. Uh, David writes of that in verse 3 when he says, When I consider your heavens, so he's writing to Yahweh, uh, his Lord, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? And of course, in the uh, Old Testament scripture, the son of man is uh, at times representative of all of humanity, but more often specifically, of the Son of Man, who Jesus later then claimed to be, the Son of Man, the head of the human race, the seed of the woman, a prophes a prophesied of uh, and promised to mankind to be the source of redemption for a fallen race. And so staking out the territory and the relationship the Son of Man, what is the Son of Man? Who is he? That you, uh, Of what importance is he to you that you visit him? For you have made him, speaking of mankind and the Son of Man in particular, a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. God became man and dwelt among us. He didn't deny or leave or absent his deity, but he 
was and is fully God and fully man at the same time. For you have made him a little lower than the angels. That's what Jesus became and who indeed we are from the get-go. A little lower than the angels in the hierarchy of sentient beings. You have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. Genesis chapter 1. That's the message right there. He created us to have dominion over the works of his hands, which he now, David, describes poetically uh, what Moses spelled out in the first chapter of the Bible. You have put all things under his feet. The human race has been given charge of this planet. We've done miserable with it. All sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the seas, and then that closing peon of praise, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. <laughs> well, Thursday, a little bit of uh, study into the nature of man, his fall, uh, his deliverance and redemption by man so that paradise lost can become paradise regained <laughs> as it is spoken of. Think about who you are. Think about who you are in relationship to God and in relationship to your fellow humans. Where you are in the hierarchy of beings in relation to angels, those unseen creatures that God created long before he created man, both uh, exalted angels and those angels who fell into the demonic realm ruled over by the one who is called the prince of the power of the air, even Satan, the devil, our adversary. So we consider these things and we recognize God has given us a place and an identity, and a word of truth that speaks light into darkness and brings hope into a dark and dying world. Who is God? Who is man? What is man that God has made us a little lower than the angels, but given supervision and administrative privilege over the beasts of the field and the fish of the sea, and over every living creature. Amazing. And what is our role? And what is our past? What is our present? And what is our future? What is it all about? And that is a question to explore in the study of systematic theology, a survey of Bible doctrine. That word doctrine is sometimes a threat to many, and yet it simply means teaching and we're looking at what the Bible teaches about God and about man and about the angels and about the past, the present and the future. I hope you'll stay tuned for the interpretive side of this and then on Sundays, Sundays the sequenced messages in the future will pertain to more of the applicational and celebratory aspects of the revelation of God to man uh, concerning all that he has written, a survey of what the Bible has to say about all that is around us. Let's close in prayer and then we'll have some music by my son Aaron Kanegi uh, from Fort Worth, Texas, as he will sing Great is Thy Faithfulness and some other helpful worship uh, music and uh, read to us from Isaiah chapter 53 verses 1 to 6 about the redemption that God has provided through that one known as the Son of Man whom God has given as the servant of the Lord to all of mankind. Lord, thank you for your goodness and kindness. We depend upon you and desire that we might please you in all that we do and say. 
that we might understand who you are and who we are in relationship to who you are. Thank you for making yourself known. Thank you for the goodness of your word and the sweetness of it to us. May it be like honeycomb nourishing us and enriching our life experience. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. See you Sunday. I'd like to share uh, just a scripture from Isaiah 53. This is verses 1 through 6. It says this, Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hid their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. We, all like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Let's sing together the song, Man of Sorrows.
Now the curse of sin has no hold on me. Whom the Son sets free, oh, is free indeed. Now my debt is paid, it is paid in full by the precious blood that my Jesus spilt. Now the curse of sin has no hold on me. Whom the Son sets free, oh, is free indeed. Oh, that rugged cross, my salvation, where your love poured out over me. Now my soul cries out, hallelujah, praise and The stone is rolled away. Behold the empty tomb. Hallelujah, God be praised. He's risen from the grave. Oh, that rugged cross my salvation where your love poured out over me now my soul cries out hallelujah praise and honor unto thee praise and Blessings all mine with ten. 
10,000 beside. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning.